Hello everyone. My name is Ashish and welcome to the Stack Instance channel. So this is the continuation of my last lecture. So in the last lecture, I have explained and I have done the setup of how to use a asynchronous execution in a Spring Boot application. And there I have used at the rate async annotation and also at the rate enable async. And there I have explained you uh, the uses of this annotation and also like why we use asynchronous and what is asynchronous execution so if you want to know more about this then then i will suggest you to visit my last lecture so this is the continuation of my last lecture and and in my last lecture i have created a thread pool and there i have set a pool size right so in this lecture i am going to show you how to create a dynamic thread pool and how to create a dynamic thread whenever it is required right so let's see what i have done in my last lecture so in my last lecture i have created one like method with a get a sync executor and here you can see i have set a pool size and also set a core pool size right so in this there is a limitation of a thread if your project is big and there is a huge execution then there may be chance that you may get some exception that thread is not available right so the best way to implement for a for a big enterprise uh, like application or, or a project to create a dynamic thread pool and to create a thread like dynamically when it is required so this we are going to see in this lecture so what we can do for that we have to create a config uh, file so for this i am going to use a executor class and okay so first of all i am going to create a config class for this so this implementation we are not uh, going to use for now so let me delete uh, let me delete this and this is the main class okay so in the main class i will keep at the rate enable async so this is going to uh, enable asynchronous execution for my spring boot project okay and now i am going to create one package in which i will create a config class and inside that config class i am going to create one uh, like method which is going to create a thread dynamically when it is required so let's create a package first so i am going to name this package with a config and inside this package i am going to create one more class with the name something with the name let's say something async config and this class will implement uh, implement a async async like configure okay and this is coming from your spring framework scheduling annotation package okay and if we will see and now what i'm going to do now i'm going to create one method with the name get async executor so this method is will be public and the return type will be executor get async right so this is my method name and this is the executor so i need to implement this executor with a java.util concurrent package so this executor class is coming from uh, java.util.concurrent uh, package <coughs> sorry and i have to define one uh, like return type for so let me add a return type 
and in the return type i am going to call a method of a executor class so let me show you the executor yeah so here you can see so this is the executor class and i have opened a like official document for a like oracle and this is the concurrent package so inside concurrent package we get one executors class which extends object class of course and then we have a certain methods right so for this we are going to use a new cache thread pool method so this new cache thread pool method is going to create a thread pool that create a new threads as needed so it is going to create a thread whenever it is required or whenever it is needed and it will reuse the previous constructed thread also when they are available so here we no need to set up a thread pool size and and we no, and we don't need to restrict ourselves with a thread in our application so we can dynamically create a thread pool and then it is going to create a new thread whenever it is required or it is needed and also it is going to use the previous constructed thread if they are available or free to be executed right so this is the best approach in your application to create a thread dynamically when it is required so i am going to use this method a new cached thread pool method and this method comes from a executor class and executor class is coming from java.util concurrent package so let's switch to our eclipse and here so let's call this method directly with a executor class dot new new catch thread pull okay so this is the executors class so i need to import okay so i am making a spelling wrong so this is executor so import this executors class and inside this we have one method with a new catch thread pool so here you can see new thread pool is a static method so we can directly call this with a class name and this creates a thread pool that creates a new thread as needed but it will reuse the previous constructed thread when they are available this pool will typically improve the performance of a program that execute many short live asynchronous tasks let you have uh, in a project a requirement to execute uh, like n number of threads with which are short live so this is the best approach to uh, create a thread pool and to create a thread and then use it right and calls to execute will reuse previous constructed heads if available right so this is the best approach okay so we will use a new case thread pool method so this method is going to create a thread pool and then it is going to create a thread whenever it is required so we have to mark this method with a bean annotation so let's provide uh, the name to this bean uh, i will give this name with a, a sync executor okay and also we have to mark this config class as with a component annotation okay so so till here we have created one config class and config class implements a sync configure and and here you can see we have one method get a sync executor and this is uh, and i have marked this with a bean so that this object will be created at the time of the installation by a uh, like a, a spring and also i have created and and it will return a, a return a thread right like whenever it is required 
so now what i need to do i will again go to my main class and here i have uh, and here i have like deleted my previous implementation in which i have created thread pool and also i have set a thread pool size so now what i will do so i will show you my controller so in this controller so this is my controller and this is my add user so so with this method i am adding a user information or an object to a database so this is my get so so inside this method you can see i am using i am calling a get user method and then i am calling a save user method so first i will show you a save user method so save user method is is calling a uh uh like a user repository and a and a user repository is a jpa okay so this all this implementation you can get from my previous lecture okay so here i'm not going to explain this so i'm just here to show you how to uh, use asynchronous with a dynamic thread so this method is going to uh, save a user now let's go to the controller and here before that i am using a get user okay so in this method only add user method of a controller i am going to call these two method the first will be get users so get user method and i have marked this method with the async annotation so you have to mark your asynchronous method with the async and annotation and here and as in my config class i have created the bin with a async executor name so i have to change this name also with a, a async execute executor all right so this is my async method and here in this method if you will see just to show you i have uh, i have put it some log like system order print sleep method started and i have put it a sleep method of 10 second and then the sip method ended and then it is using a jpa method that is find all method to get all the users present in my database and then i am using a for loop to iterate that user object and so and so you in a console okay so this is my get user method it is get user method basically fetching the data from the database all the users information available in the database and this is async method so here in my controller i am calling so uh, so this is my endpoint post map uh, mapping and this is uh, my url so so yeah so to test it i am going to call this uh, add user endpoint so as it will call uh, it will call this get user method first so get user method uh, it will see that a async is annotated so it is asynchronous method so it is going to call this it does not have to wait for the other method to get executed okay so here it is better to put this here okay so after my save method so first of all as uh, as i will call add user method so it is going to save the user in the database so it does not have to wait to get executed the save method it will call a get user method okay and get user method is a async method so it will get executed and it will fetch all the data and here i have put some uh, like a slip of 10 second so it will wait for 10 second and then it will fetch all the data from the database and then it will show you in the console so let me test it and let me show you uh, how this is getting executed so i have started the server okay so you can see my server uh, my application is running on local port 8080 now let's go to the postman directly and before that i want to show you that go to the controller so this is my like a stack instance and this is my class label uh, mapping and this is my uh, like method label uh, url with the save user so let's go to the postman and here i have already made uh, the url stack instance and the save user and this is the post method 
and in the body i am passing the username email and city okay so let me change this asis bhagat 7 as a name and email id asis bhagat 7 at the red gmail.com and now what i will do i will hit a and i will send a request so now you can see here in the console you are getting a sleep method is started okay and before that you can see our save uh, like save method has executed and as the save method is not completed it is started our async method okay and the sleep method is started and the sleep method ends after 10 seconds and then we get all the users available in the database and the last we saved with the name asis bhagat 7 and with the email asis bhagat 7 and also i can verify you in my mysql workbench so this was my table name uh, sorry uh, the database name and this is my table with the name users and you can see i have uh, saved this data in the database so yeah so in this lecture i have shown you how to do a async execution in a spring boot application but here i have used a dynamic uh, like creation of a thread by a method uh, by using a method new cached thread pool method of a executors class okay and with this we are creating a thread pool and then it is creating a thread whenever it is required and that thread is executing our that thread is executing our get user method because it says that this method is annotated with async so it will take one thread from the thread pool and then that thread will execute this method so this like save method will be executed by a different thread and at the same time in a parallel this get user method will be executed by a, another thread so in a same time we can execute a different different method so this get user method does not have to wait for a save user method to get executed completely as you will see here we are first calling a save user method okay so save method uh, should execute uh, first and after the save method execution complete the get user uh, method should get executed okay but here we are using async uh, like implementation or execution so the get user method should, should not have to wait for a save user method to get get executed fully it will uh, take a thread a new thread from a thread pool and then it will execute a get user method and then it will slip because we have added a slip and then it will fetch all the data from the database so like this in your application or a project you can use a asynchronous execution to execute a different different method in a in a same time or or yeah or like parallelly okay so i hope you understand this lecture so see you in the next lecture thank you and have a nice day